I would like to, to start with a question mark. Is LCNMA a useful tool for natural product research? Okay, everybody knows the answer, but I would like to discuss some aspect of this uh, ethanation technique and discuss some aspect looking for the point of view of NMA guy. Because, well, we can combination different ethanation technique like Professor uh, showed you before, but we don't have this uh, um, equipment here. So uh, I will discuss this uh, looking for the point of view uh, about our facility, the facility that you have on the NMA lab. Well, to begin in the history, uh, the LEC NMA, the NMA Foundation, started many years ago. He started with Watanabe, Bayer, in the end of uh, 1970. So many, uh, many years ago, more than 30 years ago, uh, we have others, person, Jer Jersey and Vasili, Vasili, Vasiliki, uh, 10 years ago. And more recently, Klaus Alberti from Tubing University. Certainly, we can put more names here. But the idea is just just show that the, the LCNMA started, uh, roughly speaking, 40 years ago. There are many common information technique. Everybody knows uh, GCMS uh, technique, information, uh, LEC. Uh, I put here UV, but you have different options. Uh, LEC uh, MS, um, it's very uh, popular technique, it's very useful also. Uh, LEC uh, refraction index, it's not so uh, used so much. And there are less common information technique. One of them is GC infrared. We had one equipment here in our department. I don't know if it's working. Uh, also, we have GC NMA. I must say we have a few papers on the literature, but uh, one company is working uh, on this area. Another technique is LEC MS NMA. One company have these information techniques together. Um, so it's commercial one. But I'm not talking about this because we don't have this option in our lab. I'm talking about the option that we have here. One of them is LEC and NMA. LEC, uh, solid phase extraction, NMA. And LEC, uh, loop storage. Indeed, is a, a fraction collector but uh, one company called this loop storage. So I will show you some results that we have here using this different approach of LEC NMA technique. One of them is the LEC NMA on flow. Um, this technique, in my opinion, is not very useful if you think about the point of view of natural product research. And why not? Because we have zero restriction. Let me show you uh, one restriction. Normally, we use LEC, the DAD detector, and goes direct to the uh, magnet. Here, normally we use the cryofit. Cryofit is uh, a, a spare part produced for one company. And we have a small cell here. I show you this is small cell, how it's work, because you use in other kind of ethanation. The cryofit is this tube. It's a metal tube, aluminum tube. Here on the bottom, we can see 
maybe more clear here is the cell. The cell is around six, 60 uh, microlit, uh, can be 120 microlit. The flow comes from the bottom to the up, and we put this inside the magnet. But there are one problem. When you put inside the magnet, first we spend a little bit time, around the half an hour, because we have here uh, a five millimeter cryogenic probe head, so we need to, to put these this spare parts inside very caref carefully. Otherwise, uh, uh, we start the warm up. So we spend a little bit time uh, to introduce this. And another problem, if you use this approach, you cannot use the NMA for other purpose because you are using the cryofit. So normally when we, we put the cryofit, we work it during all the week. And after this, we remove. But I said the on-flow NMA, we have some problem because first, we needed to use a deuterate solvent, at least one of them, depend the mixture, but normally we use water on the chromatography uh, uh, separation, and normally we use D2O, like a deuterate solvent. Mineral compound cannot be detected because it uh, goes direct from the DAD to the, the, the magnet, so we don't have so many compounds. The other limitation is it's mandatory to use a cryogenic probe head and have an excellent pressaturation solvent. If you don't have this, you cannot see the signal. But if you know about the mixture, you have a good idea about the mixture of compound, you can use this approach. I show you uh, one example. For instance, if you have this chromatogram, and the, these three compounds, if we can identify, indeed, it's just certifi certificate that we have this compound, we can run an uh, uh, on-flow uh, uh, approach. But there are one problem. If you look here, this difference between one peak and another is on the scale of minutes. One minute have six seconds. Good. One minute having 60,000 milliseconds. It's a huge time for NMA. But we can do this using ultra fast NMA. For example, here we have uh, for this sample a close experiment is uh, 63 minutes. 63 minutes means 3 million, 7, 8,000 milliseconds. It's Real average time. If you consider that we can have the same information in 107 microsecond, millisecond. So, if you uh, want to, to run uh, on flow LC NMA, one option is uh, using ultra fast NMA. I, I'm not going in detail about this experiment, but it's one option. Another option is stop flow enema. If we are looking for the same spectra, we can select one of these peaks. We have many. You can select one by one. Just stop the flow, and you look what you have inside the, the cell. Well, we have, again, problem. We have problem with the diffusion. Again, mineral compound you cannot detect because comes from the uh, LEC, the, the analytical uh, chromatogram. It's necessary, again, to use a, a deuterate solvent. And again, it's mandatory uh, to have an excellent pressaturation solvent and use a cryogenic probe. Of course, you can, uh, well, it's advantage if you are looking for a specific compound. The other option in my opinion, is one of the best options if you are using only NMA, LEC NMA, if you put other uh, equipment, you have other options, of course, but if you use LEC NMA, the good option is LEC solid phase extraction NMA. You see, I don't put here 
uh, affination because maybe you don't need it. Well, indeed, it's not a, a true infination. What normally we do? Run the LEC uh, uh, chromatogram, detect this, and send it to solid phase extraction. We have some options. One option, after you dry the uh, SP cartridge, you can send it directly to the NMR. For this, you must to use, again, the cryofit. The inconvenient to use the cryofit, that is, you put the cryofit, you cannot put and remove like you change your t-shirt, no. You spend a lot of time to do this. But we have another option. This is the reason because it's not a finition. We can take the sample from here and put in a 2.5 or 3 millimeter uh, tube and well, like other technique, you can send this tube for other machine, etc., etc. This option is because we do not we don't have 1.7 millimeter cryoprobe. We just have a 5 millimeter. For this reason, we can choose 2.5 or 3 millimeter uh, tube. Uh, the best result we find here with 3 millimeter tube. And the limitation is that you need to choose the correct <coughs> stationary phase on the SP. Uh, everybody would like to have a universal uh, uh, solid phase extraction cartridge. You can trap everything, but it's not true. So sometimes you choose the wrong or not correct, not more appropriate stationary phase for the SP. Um, convenient to use the cryogenic. Uh, it's not mandatory, but it's convenient to use cryogenic because, uh, you know, depend the number of loops that you can uh, collect your sample. Advantage, not necessary to use solvent, deuterate solvent. It's a good advantage, not because the, uh, only because this uh, deuterate solvent, uh, uh, well, we spend money on this, but uh, because you uh, have less problem with the pre-saturation solvent. Sample can be concentrated, repeating the loop, uh, not infinitely, but some, some, some loops, maybe third is a good number, depends, of course, uh, uh, the cartridge. And most important, you can guarantee re the reproducibility. This is very important. Otherwise, you cannot repeat it. I show you some results. These uh, um, results show about uh, this, com this pro commercial uh, product. It's HARP 10. Uh, we find it in the market. The HARP 10 is uh, a phytotherapy or a, a phyto medicine uh, compound, but we know that it's not true. If you run the chromatogram, we, and we analyze this using the uh, SPE uh, approach. Two uh, compounds elute on these uh, peaks. It's orphanidrine and piroxicam. It's not natural products. Oh, it's not uh, a, a, a phytomedicine uh, compound. Dexamethasone on this peak number three and acetic and ranitidine on peak uh, four and five. So, on this case, SP, you just ruin the chromatogram. Of course, we spend time to optimize the condition. Uh, it's, it's absolutely necessary this, uh, to uh, have a good uh, separation here, but you can trap this compound and of course, you can run 1D, 2D uh, spectra. Another example is uh, another crude extract. We just uh, use uh, methanol, 1.5 milli, milli, uh, millimeter, uh, millimeter, uh, milliliter, uh, well, half a gram of uh, uh, the sample, powder sample. Is, we just take a capsule, open the capsule. This is the Brazilian name, Folha Negra. Just filter this and we have uh, this chromatogram. Well, but to get this chromatogram, we spend a lot of time to optimize all the condition. But after this, uh, 
the first impression when you're looking for this chromatogram, you say, wow, well, I'm looking for these seven peaks here. Because, wow, well, it's a big peak. So uh, we did the same. Uh, we can uh, see that here we have uh, two compounds elute together. And we can identify the compound. We trap all these peaks, um, dry the, 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 the SPE cartridge, elute with uh, a deuterate solvent, and uh, put in the tube, NMR tube, and goes to the NMA. We can identify the chlor chlorogenic uh, acid family, chlorogenic, neochlorogenic, uh, cryptochlorogenic, caffeine, routine, and also some isomers of the caffeokinic acid, we can identify. But the second point is, what about these small peaks here? 